Before I begin with the topic, I just want to let you guys know that the reason to why is that I have been off of Discord like for at least two days uh, was because my parents decided to be assholes and take my computer away. Uh, I will not go into details to why, not because it's like, uh, you, um, what's what's the word? Uh, um, giving off things that I did to the reasoning of why is it that they took it, even though it was a stupid reason. Uh, but it's because, you know, it's kind of personal, and also I don't want to make people believe, like, oh, yeah, you know what, like, my parents are, like, this month, these monsters and stuff, so they're not. Like, what they did, did piss me off, and God knows I'm not going to give them back my computer, if even though they tell me to. I don't even care if I get in trouble, but, uh, I just want to get that out of the way. But I will say this, today's topic is going to be another wrestling talk, so what's going on, Fazanos? My name is Wolfsix77, welcome to another wrestling talk. Today's... We're going to be talking about the two pay-per-views that had just recently, well, the two-day pay-per-view that just recently passed, WrestleMania. Oh my god. I wish I was there to watch the first half of it, but I wanted to go hang out with my friends, so yeah, that was my problem. But hey, I still got to see the rest of it, and I'm proud of it. So first, let's talk about night one of WrestleMania. For the first match of WrestleMania, we had Bobby Lashley, the WWE Heavyweight Champion, versus Drew McIntyre. And in that process, we saw that Drew McIntyre had almost, almost had his opportunity to be champion again. But in the end, it all came down to Bobby Lashley being the champion. Still, So Bobby Lashley retained his WWE Championship. Uh... The or I'm gonna go. I'm gonna spitball all the orders after that. Uh, freaking the new day I think came out to fight up against AJ Styles and Omas, and AJ Styles had a good match between the new day. But Jesus, once Omas came in, the new day basically should have been dead. Omas destroyed them, and it's it's still a surprise to see how they're still standing. So. In the end, though, Omas and AJ Styles are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. So that's going to be an interesting sight to see. Uh, what was the next match that I didn't see? Uh, I believe it was Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. And it looked like uh, Seth could have had the opportunity to beat Cesaro. But Cesaro had the upper hand and gave him 23 spins like usual. And ended up winning against Seth Rollins at the end of the match. So that was a good one. Uh, we also saw Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman. And Shane almost had it won. Because he was smart enough to have have Jack, Jackson Riker and uh, Elias come in to try and weaken Braun. And even when, when Shane tried to get out of the cage when he saw Braun weak. Braun became a fucking beast. Grabbed Shane from the, ca from the cage. And pulled off the fence of the cage. And pulled Shane back in. I thought that shit was scary. That looked like straight out of a fucking monster movie. And the next thing you know, Shane got his ass demolished by Braun Strowman. So, so far, that feud was kind of stupid. But that match was actually pretty good. The only thing I want to ask is, why the fuck are Elias and Jackson Riker involved now? Like, seriously. That's the most stupidest fucking thing ever. But either way, that match was also pretty good. Uh, and then I think after that, that's when we had the tag team match between Bad Bunny and Damien Priest versus Miz and Morrison, which I was hyped for. You have no idea. Like, I got so hyped for when, I, for when that match started. I, I remember I was hanging out with my friends, and by the time I got home, that's when the match was barely about to start. Like, Miz and Morrison had just made their entrance. It was now time for Damien Priest to make his entrance. And then Bad Bunny had the coolest entrance ever. I, and it was awesome. So the match was pretty good. Bad Bunny did some good matches, but throughout that whole shit, Bad Bunny had pulled off some good moves that actually looked legit. Like he he pulled them off swiftly. Like obviously you could tell the wrestlers helped them out with it because you know, you know that's what they had to do when they're still like you know newcomers. The wrestlers had to help out other wrestlers when it comes to pulling off moves. But like the way he pulled everything off was fucking amazing, and the closing moments is what made it even better. Because Bad Bunny fucking flipped, pile drived Morrison onto the mat. And it looks so smooth. It looks so smooth that even Morris, the freaking Miz and Priest were looking at him like. Because like everyone was in complete shock. Even I was like, I was like, what? Fucking Priest 
and Miz were so shocked by this that they didn't even realize they had to finish it. Everyone was shocked by this. I thought Morrison was dead. Uh, and in the end, they ended up with Damon Priest and Bad Bunny ended up winning, and I thought that was pretty cool. And now I'm curious to see what Bad Bunny's uh, gonna do now. Like, is he gonna continue wrestling for WWE, or is this it? Like, what's going on? Because that was actually pretty awesome. And then it comes to the, the fi final match of WrestleMania Night 1, and that was the historic night between, between Bianca Belair and... And Sasha Banks. I won't say why it's a historic moment because I feel like if I do, people are going to be coming at me for being uh, racist and shit. Because, you know, people are stupid like that. Uh, not all you guys, obviously. All you guys are fine. People who are watching me are fine. But I'm talking about those people who are, like, are stupid enough to, like, go around looking for the, easy, for the easiest targets and then just start saying all these bad things about them because they think, oh, you know, because they said this thing, they're racist, you know, all that stuff. If you guys want to figure out why it's a historic moment, look it up and you'll see why. But this was an awesome main event, bro. Like, this, like in the beginning, this is how historic it was. Because when these two got to be in the main event of the first night of WrestleMania, even before their match started, they were supposed to be heated rivals at that point. But they quickly pushed that all aside because all th both of these women were fucking crying. They wanted to cry and break down crying because of how historic it was. Especially Bianca Belair because this is her first ever WrestleMania. She barely, well someone barely came into the WWE uh, joining Raw somewhere in the WrestleMania during 2020. Uh, bad debut by the way. And they continued, she didn't have any build-up during Raw, but then when she moved to SmackDown, she actually started getting some good build-up, especially going against Bayley. That was a good build-up right there, and the next thing you know, she ends up becoming the winner of the Women's 2021 Royal Rumble. I thought that she was awesome. So that would show that WWE was actually pushing her, but the thing that worried me was that Bianca may lose the title. But instead, she actually became the new SmackDown Women's Champion on WrestleMania, and I thought that shit was awesome. She fucking won the title, and is now the new SmackDown Women's Champion, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds in store for us. From what I can tell, I feel like Bianca Belair will end up becoming, will be reigning the title for a bit, and I feel like she's going to be going up against Bayley again, because these two had a feud with each other before. So I'm, cer I'm certain that this is going to happen. Also... Fucking Bianca whipped B Sasha Banks with her hair so hard you could literally see the mark on her waist. Like that shit was bad. I was like, oh fuck. And the sound it made after that scared the shit out of me, bro. I thought you think your guys, you think your parents hit harder when they fucking hit you with a belt or a fucking chancla? Fuck nah. Bianca Bella basically whipped her Sasha with her hair. That's more deadly than the fucking chancla and the belt. Jesus Christ. Also, I forgot to mention that somewhere during down before the main event, uh, there was actually a tw tag team women's battle royale between who was going to win to fight up against uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax in the night two of WrestleMania for the women's tag team titles. Uh, and that was uh, T Tamina and Natalia. Gonna let you guys know, actually, this. Um, I didn't care that much for it. I kind of lost interest in the women's tag team titles after Nikki Cross and Alexa broke up and after uh, Asuka... Went off to be women's champion and and what's and freaking Kyrie Zane had to leave WWE and I also felt sad too too when uh, the Iconics broke up because they were actually a pretty good tag team I feel like things could have been good with these guys and now this is just how it is also be, speaking of the Iconics I want to talk about another topic next time maybe later on which it talks about the uh, situation that's been going on with uh, Billy K not Billy K uh, Peyton Royce because. Like, uh, cause WWE had planned to do something, but they weren't doing it well, and I'm kind of pissed off by it. So, that's just how it is. Um, and now we're gonna be talking about night two, which I was here to watch. Night two started off pretty well, actually, with Randy Orton versus the Fiend. That shit looked awesome, and the Fiend got a new styled uh, mask, and it was pretty good. It was a good match until the closing moments came up, cause when. When Bray was about to hit the sister Abigail on Randy, Alexa was on the box with the black ink on her with barbed wire, which looked interesting. The two of them were staring at each other and reaching out their hands to one another, which gave enough distraction for Orton to pull off the RKO and pin 
Bray. I had thought that Bray was gonna win. Granted, I'm not upset with the with the loss. Okay, I I mean I am kind of upset, but I'm not that upset. It's more of just what was the angle with that? Like, why is it that Alexa did that to the Fiend? What was the reasoning behind it? And me and my like my parents and I were trying to figure this out, even my siblings. But I was the one that was mostly scratching my head. So we're like, what the fuck was the meaning behind it? Like it was. It was confusing, and I want to know what it is. Like, is there going to be a build-up to it? Is there a build to, like, oh, is Alexa going to fucking betray Bray Wyatt now? Is Alexa breaking free from the trance? Or what? Are we going to... Is there actually another Fiend? Was that Fiend the fake, and there was going to be another Fiend coming out? Like, the real Fiend? Like, what? What was going on with this? Also, I kind of feel disappointed uh, they didn't have Bray Wyatt come out as the burnt Bray Wyatt like they planned. I thought that would have been cool. But it was still cool to see him, like, you know, refurbished again. So this was awesome. Uh, next match was... What was the next match? Uh, I think it was the women's tag team match between Shayna and Nia against Tamina and Natalia. Uh, Tamina and Natalia were actually good matches. And it seemed like things were going to go their way. But in the end, it was Shayna and Nia. And Nia, who won. So Nia and Shayna are still the women's tag team titles. I kind of lost interest in the tag team titles for the women's side because they haven't been doing well with them. So, yeah. The only the only women's tag team titles I really care about at this point is the NXT women's tag team titles because those are doing good. And I'm waiting for AEW to do that where they had tag team titles for them because they haven't done that yet and I want to see that. Um, What's that? What else is after that? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Uh, after that match, I believe, was the United States title match, which also was pretty good. It was between Sheamus and Matt Riddle, and the match was actually pretty good. The closing moments is what shocked me, because Sheamus went for a bro kick, and Matt Riddle managed to dodge it, and he was going to go for a moonsault on Sheamus, but Sheamus countered it with a bro kick so bad that it busted Matt Riddle's lip afterwards, and you could see him bleeding after that. In the end, though, Sheamus was the one that won, came out on top, and is your new United States champion. So, bye-bye, Riddle. You won that title back at, uh, Pel not Pell in the Cell, Elimination Chamber, and now you lost it. So, it was a good run, man, but Sheamus, I hope he has a good run with it, too. After that, I believe, was Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, which was actually a pretty good matchup, which also brought back some nostalgia to when they first fought back in NXT, to their build-up, to everywhere they went, whenever they fought each other. Like, their rivalries with one another was pretty awesome, and this one was pretty sick, too. Granted, this one was more of just Kevin Owens trying to knock some sense into Sami Zayn because of his quote-unquote conspiracy theories. But either way, this match was pretty good. Both Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens showed off pretty well. And when Logan Paul came out, you could see a lot of people were like, Hey, yeah, and there was also a lot of people who were like, Boo! Uh, I, I feel like these people are upset with uh, Logan still with the whole past with the old videos. Probably not, but either they, or these are just people who hate on, on Logan. So you know what? Eh, who cares? But this was actually pretty good. It was a good match. And in the end, it was Kevin who won. And after he lost, uh, Logan went to check on Sammy. And then he went to go congratulate Kevin. And Sammy was like, what the hell? You're my special guest. What are you doing? And then Sa uh, Logan pushes Sammy. And Logan tries to, I guess, tries to be friends with Kevin. So he's like raising Kevin's hand. Like, yeah, he won. And Kevin's just looking at him like, like, he was so... And, like, you could tell Kevin was gonna stun him. And after that, he laughs, and you're thinking, Oh, no, he's not gonna stun him. And they're about to shake hands. Motherfucker stuns Logan Paul! And I got so happy when I saw that shit, man. Because I was waiting for Kevin to fucking do the stunner, man. That was awesome, bro. So, yeah, Kevin Owens won, and it was pretty awesome to see that. Uh, Next up was the Intercontinental title match between uh Biggie and... uh. Apollo Crews, and I'm not gonna lie, I knew Apollo was gonna win, but I wanted Biggie to win. But in the end, it was Apollo who won, and that was because he had Dabakota, I think that was his name. If you guys don't know who Dabakota is, he was that, like, big guy who was, like, a big-time thing in, uh, Monday Night Raw Underground, or Raw Underground, which, by the way, I wonder why they took that shit down, like, what the fuck was that all about? That was actually a pretty good segment. And then, even with, uh... And also, that guy was also the main bad guy in uh, the main event in WWE's movie on Netflix. It was actually a pretty good movie, too. Um, but these guys were actually pretty good. 
and the match was pretty good between both Apollo and Biggie. It was really good, and but in the end, Apollo uh, reigned supreme and won the title. And that was the third match. And the next up, we had Rhea Ripley versus Asuka for the Raw Women's title. And my money was on Rhea to win it. And baby, I was right. We have a new Raw Women's Champion, man. We have Rhea Ripley as the new champion. She barely came into Monday Night Raw and is already coming out as Raw Women's Champion, bro. I am happy about that. I am proud of that. And I cannot wait to see how well Rhea... Rhea defends her title, man. She is a beast, and I cannot wait to see her dominate, man. I swear. If WWE pulls a stupid move and have Rhea lose her title tomorrow, today, whether to Asuka again or, like, to someone else, I'm gonna be pissed off. They should give her a long reign. And I can't wait for Shayna Baszler to be the new Ramos champion, too, because, like, I've seen how Shayna fights. She deserves to be a champion, bro. Uh, and then after that, we had our main event. The triple threat match for the Universal title. Roman Reigns versus J versus Daniel Bryan versus Edge. It was a good match, bro. Oh my god. And since it was a triple threat match, there was a no disqualification, which is actually pretty cool. And, uh, fucking hell. Bro, fucking... It was so good, and Uso had to always get involved. And you could tell everyone was pissed off at that. Like, granted, it's one thing for when someone gets involved to mess things up, like, you know, out of the blue. But when it comes to Uso, it's so repetitive to the point where it's like, bro, someone's gonna jump over the fucking barricade and knock Uso's teeth in. I want to beat the shit out of Jey Uso because, god damn, dude, this is starting to get annoying at this point. And Edge was smart, though, because he fucking spears... Uso down, but at the same time, he fucking DDTs his ass hard onto the steel steps to the point where I think he almost killed Uso. But he took him out for a pretty long time, and Reigns and Edge and Daniel were actually doing good. And Edge was so close to tapping out Roman, and Edge could have got the win, but fucking Brian had to stop it, man. Jesus. They just both wanted to win. Edge almost had the victory too because he concerto Daniel Bryan and he was about to concerto Edge, I mean Edge, uh, Roman Reigns, but then Jey Uso had to come in and ruin it again and it pissed, pissed everyone off. It pissed my dad off too because it's starting to get annoying. And then fucking Edge fucking chair shots J Uso and then Roman, if I remember, I think he speared Edge and then he concerto Edge. And he put Edge on top of Daniel. And I thought, is he giving da Edge the win? And no, he pins both Daniel and Edge at the same time. Which showed, this showed that this motherfucker is not only confident and intimidating, but this also showed that this motherfucker is showing who's the true dominant one in this fucking ring. And in SmackDown. And that's fucking Roman Reigns. He pins the two. Like, I knew Roman was going to win. But Jesus Christ, the way he won was awesome. And also, I was pissed off he won. Because I pissed off that I was right. By the way, I was right about all of night one. And also somewhat right about night two. I only got one wrong. I did not give two shits about, about who was going to win for the women's tag team titles. Because again, I lost interest in that. But everyone thing else, I was basically right. Except for The Fiend. I They lost that one. So I was kind of pissed off about that. But yeah, that was a pretty awesome WrestleMania. Now, I can't wait to see what does Raw and SmackDown have in store for us after this. Because... We have new champions already. We have a new universal. We have a new fuck. I was gonna say universal. We have a new United States champion. We have a new intercontinental champion. We have a new Raw Women's champion. We have a new SmackDown Women's champion. We have a new eight freaking Raw tag team champions. It's gonna be pretty interesting to see what's gonna go down for both Raw and SmackDown. I also can't wait to see what how things are gonna go down for NXT after with the the NXT Takeover Rise and Deliver this past week. Week man, this is gonna be interesting. Um. I'm still curious, why is it The Fiend lost and in that matter? Like, what was the point of that? Was there a reasoning behind it? What? What was it? Uh, but either with an, other than that, yeah, I wanted to figure that out. Other than that, that's kind of about it. Uh, there's nothing really else I could talk about. Except maybe there's got to be some sort of build-up they're going to have with The Fiend after that. They better have some good build-up because that was some bullshit. Well, not really bullshit, but it was confusing. Uh, other than that, yeah, that's kind of about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
Uh, I really appreciate it. I'll let you guys know when I talk about another wrestling topic, which is the Payne and Royce thing, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Adios, paisanos.